Everybody, we're going to be cutting it off right there because it's time for us to introduce our guest. And it is a man who has got a lot of, uh, of ways I can introduce you. Former Ranger, former Islander, ESPN, TSN analyst, Mr. Ray Ferraro. Ray, thank you very much for joining us. There's a lot of formers in there. You could keep going, you know. <laughs> <laughs> There's uh, six teams, although I try not to... Uh... I try to like the the ones that I like the Rangers. I kind of skip over because that was only like you know eight months, and St. Louis was two months. So I, I kind of like I like to think of it as four teams, but really it was six. Well, I've I've often said the Rangers' biggest mistake of that season was trading you because they nah. they. Uh, but that's gonna get. I'm actually gonna lead that into a different question, and um, because the Rangers hurt their center depth badly when they traded you that season. Do the Rangers have center depth this season? I didn't think I was going to be the first question, but I <laughs> oh, you came right out with, right? Well, yeah, I did. Yeah. You know, well, it's funny, like, you know, when, when all the Eichel stuff was popping around there about, you know, would they make a move for Eichel? It's just, you can't essentially have $20 million in two centermen unless they're McDavid and Dreisaitl. You just, you just can't because there's no money anywhere else. You got a, you got a couple of, great players and then you've got to cut corners all over the place it just the cap kills depth everywhere and so everybody wants what somebody else has a lot of teams would probably like adam fox too on their blue line and not having him onto an extension till next year or anything like that but you got what you got right mm -hmm. speaking of uh teams that might have to cut corners in terms of cap uh cap management and having top heavy rosters with players do you think that Toronto is going to be able to make uh, some moves at the deadline, Ray? They are. Um, so, so one of the things that they're doing is they play a pretty threadbare roster, right? So they're, they don't have a lot of extra guys hanging around. Uh, they have the benefit of their farm team uh, is about three miles away. Uh, so if they need a player, he just drives up the road, comes to practice and they don't have to waste a day of pay on flying them around. So, it doesn't seem like much, but each day you accrue cash, it sits there at the deadline for you. And so there, there are holes in their team. Like right now they're trying to play Nick Ritchie with uh, Austin Matthews and Mitch Marner. He's got no, no goals. Like that's clearly not a first line left winger, but what they did in the summer, they, they went out and signed a couple of guys. It's a, you know, a couple of those signings that nobody really notices. And then you see them up close and you go, geez, you know, these guys are pretty good. So, they signed David Camp from Chicago. I think he makes $1.5 million. And uh, Andre Kasha uh, from Boston, who, signed, who makes $1.25. Kasha's a hell of a player. Now, he's been waylaid, unfortunately, with concussion over the last couple of years. But he's healthy. And he, I'm telling you guys, he looks awesome. But So you've got a top nine guy making $1.25 million. That's a so there is room, right? There is room. Camp has been a... Really good ad. He's got three goals this year. He had one last year in Chicago in 56 games. Like, that's hard to do. But he checks well. He kills penalties. Gives some space for their big money boys to get a little breather. So I think they can add. The key for them might be if Jack Campbell can keep playing the way he can. Or the way he is. Because he's been, he's been brilliant for them. Really has. I did the game last night. He had another shutout. And um, I think Toronto's pretty good. I, I do. They, they need a forward for sure. They probably could use another defenseman. Can you do both? There's no discussion that starts and ends without the cap, right? Exactly. Right, right before you uh, joined, we were talking about the Islanders. And as the Islander fan in this group, I'll have to ask you about them. Um, I, first off, I remember watching you in 93 in that series against the Capitals. And even though Man, I was... you were young, eh? Do you remember <laughs> yeah. that, that far? Eight, eight years old. I, I was loving it, but, um, you know, 13-game road trip aside, the 5-6-2 and two record uh, obviously isn't where they wanted to be. But, you know, you've played in the league a long time, so maybe you could speak to this. Do you think the guys in the room after going to the conference finals and back-to-back -back years um, and then thinking now of what they have to go through, you know, through a full 82-game season to hopefully get back to that point, you think they're having trouble raising their, like, raising their game after playing so much high-intense playoff hockey the last two years that, it's, that they're struggling right now to match that intensity? And uh, that I do. I, I do for sure, but it's not just that though. Like, um, so 
the playoffs are one thing. The 82 games are another. They had to start with 13 games on the road. I can, I can almost guarantee you that every guy looked at that schedule and went, look at that. That sucks. Like, that's going to be hard. <laughs> And I knew, you know, they know they could come back for a day or two here, you know, because it's it wasn't like one 13 game road trip. But playing on the road that long is mentally exhausting. And you saw as the trip went on, they got worse. Like it, they need to go home. They need to go home, practice a little bit, sleep at home, eat at home, see their families like, you know, get away from just bus, hotel, airport rink game loss go to the next one that's one thing number two is like you know Zidane Char is going to punch his ticket one trip to the hall of fame right like it's but he can't do what Nick Letty did like he can't transport the puck he can't move like Letty so again like around the league people will look and go oh yeah Nick Letty had to go because you know because of the cap and here we are with the cap again and um and you try and fill him in, but the reason he left was because his salary was too big. You don't have that salary to replace him. So Noah Dobson, here's a bigger role. Jeez, he didn't handle it very well this first 13 games. So he's in street clothes the other night. So there's, there's a couple of things on the blue line. They're an older team and older guys get worn down energy wise, quicker, of course, than younger guys. So I wouldn't panic yet. But there are you know, there's some worry spots there, but um, because mainly because that's a that's a really tough division. It's going to be a hard road out of there anyway. Um, right. Lately, we've been seeing like a rash of slewfoots going around in the league. Does the league need to get back and focus and try to get those out of the game? Well, I think you're talking about one guy. <laughs> right. I mean, yes. He he yes. Right. He's actually going to be mentioned in our next segment. Yeah, I don't know. And as much as I can't wait for him to be a broadcaster, it's some that yeah, I don't. I don't know if there's a rash of them. I'll be honest with you. I don't know what the hell he's doing because he's never done it before. You know, I don't. I don't recall over his career Subban kicking people's feet out. It's a garbage play. It really is. And um, I don't know what you guys thought if you were watching the game the other night when when uh, Sammy Blay got hurt, but I could hear him scream when he Oof. went down. And I'm, you know, I've had, I've torn my ACL before. I didn't need to see anything else to know that was bad. That was either a broken ankle or an ACL. And poor kid. I mean, he was, you know, he's on the last year of his contract. He looked like he was, you know, kind of, he fit. Like he he Mm -hmm. looked really good there. The other plays that Subban had, I didn't like. I only marginally didn't like this one. Like, I, I don't think he tried to really slew foot him, but I don't like how he approached the play. And and as a result, somebody's going to lose their season. Uh, I, I don't, I, I, it's, it's one of the worst plays in the game. It really is the, the slew foot, because you're, if you're the guy that it's done to, you're totally defenseless. Like there's nothing you can do. And you just hope that you hit and land. Okay. Because you, you know, your leg could get twisted out. You could fall on your head. You, could, I mean, like there's no defense. You're going backwards. Your hands are in front of you. Um, I'm with you. I think you'll be a great broadcaster too. Yeah. Well, sticking with the Rangers, Ray, what do you think of uh, their recent play? Do you think that they're kind of maybe lucking into wins or do you, do you see a team that's not really there yet that's still adjusting to a new head coach? Uh, I think the last three games have been pretty good for them. Um, uh, I, I mean, early in the year, I, I mean, it was a one man band basically with Shesterkin. Oh, she's okay. Yeah. Have her walk in. That's okay. Who cares? <laughs> yeah, I know. It's so you're accurate. Little, your little sweetie's cute. Have her walk in. You know. <laughs> like, yeah, she's she does what she wants, really. <laughs> well, of course. And why wouldn't she? Um, I I think they're I think they're pretty good. Um, I I mean, they're going to miss a forward now in Blay. Um, that you got to try and replace. Like, who's going to do the Barkley Goudreau can't play there? That's, I mean, he had eight goals last year. It's a career high. That's not what they brought him in for. But okay, that's one thing. Then the next point is, well, who are you going to put there? And so maybe if you can smother over that for a while, again, this is where the cap in my mind is is a detriment to 
you know, to, to team balance, team depth, is you have to accrue the cap space. You can't, you can't just go get a player right now because how are you going to fit them in? What their goal is and should be, um, and I have the Rangers tomorrow night. I'm in Toronto uh, right now, so I have the Ranger game tomorrow night for TSN, is, is they have to learn and continue to drive away at limiting the number of shots limiting the amount of time they spend in their zone because it's not just the spot the shots if you spend 30 seconds of your shift in your zone great you get the puck you go to the red line you dump it in a corner and you change and so if your best players are doing that well then they're not scoring either so i i think i think they are getting adjusted to gerard um i'm a big fan i've known him a long time but i'm a fan of the way he coaches i think people like to play for him i think they like to play for him because there's some freedom in the game uh, for the players, but the early part of the year, I mean, that, I mean, Gerard said, you know, you're not going to win games like this. This isn't how you're supposed to win. So Ray, before, uh, before we let you go, I had to tell you this story, actually this question, um, the guy above me, we play men's league hockey here on Long Island. And, uh, when we had Darius Kasparitis on a show about two weeks ago, I told him this as well, but, um, we got out there on the ice and lo and behold, Benoit Hogue is playing against us. Can Can Hogue still skate? Yeah, this, oh, was, God. This, this was like he still skate. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I can. This was oh, going God. back like twelve years ago or so, but um, even then, he, I mean, Kelly wasn't trying that much, but you could tell like how good of a player he really was effortlessly. Um, yeah. What what, what can you tell us about him from your time playing with him, and oh, you know what gosh. makes him a good player that he could even still play hockey at now and still uh, <laughs> and still be really good. You know, Hoagie came in the Pierre Turgeon trade, and. Um, you know, so Pat LaFontaine went the other way and we got Turge and then we got this Benoit Ho guy. And, you know, I mean, he hadn't played much and I certainly didn't know anything about him. And uh, uh, Al Arbor put him on a line with myself and Pat Flatley. And sometimes, you know, coaches write lines and they put them on the board and they don't like it and they erase it and they put another name there and they, you know, they think. And then sometimes three guys just get thrown together and it works. And that's kind of what happened with Hoagie and myself and Flats. And man, he was so fast. He could shoot. He was, he was tough. Hoagie was tough. And, but one, I'll tell you a funny story about our line was like, we would argue about the game, like during the game. So like, you know, if, if, if Flats, who was like one of the best corner men in the league, um, if, if he was in a puck battle and, and I went to help him, you know, like he'd get mad at me to, you know, get out of here. I got the puck. If I put a puck in his skates, he'd yell at me, you know, like put it on my stick. And I'd <laughs> yell at him. Like, if you could keep up, I wouldn't have to worry about it. And then Hoagie, okay, you two guys just get the puck over here. And oh man, like we used to argue on the bench all the time and we love playing together. He was, Hoagie is funny. He used to, oh, actually, you know what? Here's the best Benoit Hoag story of all, uh, involving me of all, of all time. So me and him got into this little thing about I cut his skate laces. He'd, you know, do something to my helmet so I'd be late for practice. So it was escalating a little bit, right? So we come home after a road game, and it's raining. And so we're parked at the old practice rink. So I get into my car. I turn turn the wipers on, and it's like it's foggy, right? And so I'm – but I'm – it's 1.30 in the morning. I want to get going. So I'm driving, and – I got the defrost on. It's not working. I got the wipers. Now I got the window open. I'm like, what is this? Something's wrong with the defrost, obviously. So I'm kind of looking out the window. I'm driving home. I'm getting pelted with rain. I get out of my car at home. And as I'm walking out, I'm overwhelmed with the smell of uh, Vicks vapor rub. (laughs) Oh, no. (laughs) He had smeared the windshield on the front. Uh, and so I I had to go out and clean it the next day, like with a towel because you can't get it off. And now it's all over the wipers. I had to go get new wiper blades. And I said, Hoagie, I said, Hoagie, you, you watch it, man. I'm going to put a fish in your car and that car is going to stink forever. He goes, Oh, you do that. He goes, he goes, Oh yeah. Except he goes, you do that. I'll blow up your house. (laughs) I'm like, what? Uh, and he goes, he goes, you don't mess around. And so Hoagie <laughs> won. He beat me on that one. That's oh, that's great. You know, you know I, got anyway, I, I was watching um, a bit of the 93 uh, series between you guys, the Islanders and the yep. Penguins. 
And honestly, I thought that was probably the best hockey I've seen you play in your entire career. There was a uh, look. Thank you, your, and I agree. And, and <laughs> there was a look in your face in every highlight that they had of you and all the goals that you <laughs> scored in that series. What was it about the Penguins that gave you that look in your face that you could clearly see in these highlights? Was it was it then just the well, fact that they were the, uh, uh, the they were like the the, uh, the number one things, team? Couple or? things, yeah. Uh, no, no, it's a, it was a couple things really. Like I, I, I broke my leg that year and dislocated my ankle. I missed like forty five games and came back for the playoffs. And I, you know, everybody else is worn down and excited. I'm fresh and excited. Like I didn't play any games. I played. I think I played six games after November. And so, like, I was man. I was so excited to play. The Penguins, probably rightfully so, did not respect us at all. I mean, like, if you looked at those two rosters on the board, if you want to make yourself laugh, write those two rosters on the board and and see who should. Oh my God! Like, there's no reason we should have been in the series. Uh, Glenn Healy was unbelievable. And we honestly, we played our asses off. And, you know, Al Arbor told us before the game, like, can you play even with Ron Francis for one shift? And I was like, (sighs) yeah, I can do that for one shift. Sure. He's like, well, I'm not asking you to do it for the series. I'm just asking you to do it for this shift. And he did that to every player. And everybody felt like, man, we could do that for a shift. And then pretty soon you're one time through the lines. And he says, can you do it again? And then pretty soon you've melted away one period. And so the more it went on, the more frustrated they got, the more encouraged we got. And I was like, man, I couldn't believe we had a chance to beat those guys, honestly. And I, uh, it was, it was the best time of my pro career by, by far. I just, I just loved it. And it was, I was so fired up for that series. And when David scored in game seven, David Volek shot, when it hit the net, and I jumped on him in the corner. So we got buried by the guys. I could hear Glenn Healy. I couldn't see him because there was guys on top of me. I could hear Glenn from the far end yelling on his way down. The rink was like church. There was nothing going on. It was amazing. Yeah, they were they were definitely in shock. And you know what? That instruction from Al Arbor, no wonder why the man won four cups. And yeah. that's like how that's simple, eh? Yeah. Like, yeah. like looking back at that, like how simple, right? Like he's like, he he's he can look at the lineup and go Hall of Famer, Hall of Famer, Hall of Famer. We could all see it. And he's like, could you play even with them for one shift? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think I could do that. It's, he wasn't yeah, asking me to be better than Ron Francis. He said, can you tie him? And I'm like, yeah, I think I could tie him this shift. And sometimes it's just your time as well. Yeah. Like the Canadians won the Stanley Cup that year. I think they won 10 overtime games. That's yeah. impossible to do. Except they yeah. did. Right, because so, it was their time. John yeah. LeClaire back to back in consecutive games in overtime. To Eric yeah. Desjardins, a hat trick and an overtime yeah. winner. Yeah, unreal. It's yeah. not happening again. Doesn't have to happen again. They win the cup. Well, right. Th- thanks, thanks for coming on, with Ray. And uh, you know, we still play men's league. So if I ever see Benny on the ice again, I'll make sure I, you know, I try to give him a shot for you. I don't know if I'll succeed. If you if you see him out there, tell him Ferraro says hit the net. <laughs> 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 just out of curiosity do you do you still skate or play or try to play any sort of men's league ever or no nothing um you know what's funny so my wife wow. is uh cammy granado and yeah. so she's in the hall of fame two of us don't skate don't play hockey our kids play soccer um you know so like we don't play at all and yeah. as a unfortunate uh consequence or bill to play pay out of my career i uh, last september uh i got a, a replacement left knee and oh, so i, yeah. I had, uh sorry six surgeries on it and eventually the it wasn't even a hinge it was a wooden board and so uh, i got a chunk of metal in there and it feels pretty good but uh, i i do not play i uh every time i do I, I get on the ice i go wow that was really fun and then i'm like yeah i'm not doing it again <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, it's funny. A lot of guys stick around on Long Island here. I know Aaron Asham, you know, plays and yeah. uh, guys Glad like that. see him all over. Yeah. Oh. Well, it's an awesome place to live. Why wouldn't you stay if you could? Yeah. No, I, I love we the love island. it. You know, we love I it. Lo- I love. I loved being on the island. I loved it. It was great. Yeah, I mean, you had Garden City in the summertime and go to the beaches, and it's well, it's okay. Good. But so when I went, when I 
got traded there, all I knew of that place was the Nassau Coliseum. Yeah. Like literally, I didn't know. <laughs> I'd never even heard of Garden City. <laughs> right? Yeah. Like, yeah. No uh, idea. Is there any memory of Nassau Coliseum that sticks out in your mind? Sorry, just one last question. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, it was. So when we were there, it was kind of a dump. It was our dump. You know, it was old and it was so loud and the people were so invested. Like my memory is of that playoff series. Um, so I scored the game winner in game three in overtime and game four in overtime against, uh, against Washington. And uh, Tommy Fitzgerald, the general manager in, in uh, New Jersey now, he tackled me and we were on the bottom of the pile. I remember. And I, I'm not kidding, guys. I could feel the floor like kind of rumble. It was so loud. Wow. And it, that's, that's my memory of the Coliseum. Like the people cared. They loved being in there. Um, I went back for the Tavares return game uh, when they, oh, you know, when the Leafs went back. It was wild in there. And I was between the benches and I'm like kind of keeping my head up in case something flew out of there and, you know, hit me on the coconut. And I thought, well, if it's going to hit somebody, it'll hit AJ Malesko first because she's taller than me. So. <laughs> I, was like, I told her, I said, AJ, I'm hiding behind you here. There's no pride right now. <laughs> right, well, oh, man. Hopefully, hopefully we'll see you at UBS Arena. Um, oh. you know, I'll be there a bunch. Oh, it and... looks fantastic, doesn't it? Yeah. Doesn't it look amazing? It yes. Does. I, I will get there for sure. I will be there for sure. It looks amazing. I want to go check it out. All right. Well, hope to see you there, Rain. Thanks a lot for joining us. You, you were great. Uh, we really enjoyed it. Seriously, thank you so much. Yeah, um, we'd love to have you on again. Thanks, guys. Uh, sorry for the technical uh, lack of know-how. We got it done, though. We did. We got it <laughs> done. Yeah, it only took, only took like 11, 12 emails, but we got it done. So. <laughs> All good. Thank Thanks, you so guys. Much. Be well, and I hope your families have a, a great holiday and uh, everybody safe and healthy in your home. You as Likewise, well. Likewise. Thank you. Ray. Thank you, guys. Peace. Thank you. See ya. Thank you. All right. That's Ray Ferraro and wow. – uh, what an awesome guy. Yeah. You know what? We're, we're, we're blessed to have a lot of these good interviews as I try to look for my, my pen that I always hold to make sure that I my fidgety hands aren't a problem, but I just dropped one. I'd have to uh, say that was arguably the best one we ever did. That might be the best one we ever did. And I, you know I what? I never so. got to ask him about Travis Green either. Um, oh. Yeah. I it's When Anthony usually says, we'll get you out of this on, uh, on, on this question, yeah. I try to let it be on that one. But um, I, I had to ask him about it because you know what I was watching, I was watching the series recap. There's a, a, a YouTube account, uh, Canada Classic Sports, that that has all the old NHL Network um, classic playoff series, and I was watching it. And I tell you, every time he was in a clip, you could see the look of determination and fire in his eyes when he either scored a goal or was a part of the play. And I, I just, I had to ask him about it because it just, you don't normally see that look from a lot of guys. And to me that like, I liked Ray Ferraro as, 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 as a Ranger. And I mean, you guys know that I, I loved ESPN's original crew with him on it. NHL tonight loved him on there. So, he was an active player when he was doing that. Yeah. And he was. And I and I and I love that. So for for me, that was just awesome to be able to ask him about that because I, I think that's one of those moments where you're just like, wow, like you can tell that he wants this more than anything. That I completely was... didn't know he was married to uh, Cami Granado. Yeah, buddy. Yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah. So hockey, I mean, hockey royalty we... right there. Now, would you say the Granados are probably the most famous American family in hockey? American mm. family, probably. I mean, hey. is it right now, uh, uh, maybe the Mullins. Yeah, if not the Mullins, Mullins, maybe the Hughes as soon, the, the Hughes, if not now. The Hughes but will be, probably. The Hughes will be. But, I mean, yeah, there's – I mean, the Hatchers can say something about that. But, I mean, when you go through a legacy that goes between um, just different – and I don't want to use the term different sports, uh, but from men's hockey to women's hockey, and you win the first ever uh, – Gold medal in Nagano. And Not only that, but you, and your Hall of Famer. When you think about it, and you go down the list of names of women's hockey all time, Cami is probably a top three name. Yeah. Yeah. 
I, I would have. You, th- you think that maybe Haley Wickenheiser is probably the yeah. only other name that you would probably put like, before her. But who, who who else after who else after uh, before Cammy? I agree. Well, I mean, Hillary Knight's still going. She's and, she's still going, but she's not there yet. And, and, right and not now, just because she's Cammy attractive. Give me a call. So that was, yeah. that was awesome. I, 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 I could have asked about too. Remember his his call on the Patrick Stefan uh, missed empty net was great. Oh, <laughs> that's a good question to ask. We get yeah. Oh, um, um, Monique Lamoureux. Yeah, Monique uh, Lamoureux there's another one. one. But yeah. yeah, but I mean, and Brody, I got to say this as as a Ranger as a Ranger fan. Like I said before, their biggest mistake in ninety in ninety six was trading away. Both Rick Raro and while yeah. we're at it, Matthias Nordstrom, because that deal did nothing. The nothing. only thing that deal did was open a spot for Wayne Gretzky to come the next year. That was it. So Dari Curry didn't even stay though. Yeah, that, he didn't that, stay. He's had one goal. Yeah, and he wasn't good for them. He yeah. he 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 brought them down. Ray Ferraro would have actually helped them against Pittsburgh, big time against Pittsburgh. They could have used and, him, and he played great with Kovalov. And you know who would have uh, really appreciated it? Luke Robitaille, who needed somebody to set him up uh-huh. instead of uh, that. But mm-hmm. we're, we're, we're sorry, guys. We went on a little bit extra recapping the Ray Ferrara interview. But you know what? That's what happens when you get, like I said before, former Ranger, former Islander, ESPN, and TSN. But you know what? He was willing to keep talking. Yeah, Part no. Was- originally, originally he, he said just 15 minutes. I'm like, I'm like yeah. So – but yeah, he, but part of it was him. Yeah, I know. I know. Yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> so we can always tell him to come back on. Thing. That's a great interview because yeah. he just kept giving yeah. us info, and it. I, was, I, I could sit there and listen to that yeah. guy talk for I another just, three I hours if he wanted to. I that, missed. Yeah. I missed my damn hockey game if that meant. That if Benoit that Hoga meant. story was hilarious. Oh, oh those were those are great. Oh. <laughs> those those are great, and you know what? He's got to have a million stories from being uh, on the Thrashers in their inaugural season. And for a while with there, I mean, uh, the Hartford Whalers of the late eighties and there's so much that he probably could have given us, but that's why we got to have him on again. There we go. So by the way, what'd you think of the Ray for our interview? Throw it down in the comments below. Don't forget to leave a like share and subscribe. And again, just going to mention this before I move on to the Rangers, but we have our first ever bar meetup coming in Hicksville. Uh, the address is at the bottom, but it's don't worry. It's going to be posted in the community link. And uh, we're going to do a broadcast there, and it's going to be before the Range Rallander game. Lots of stuff, 50-50 raffle. Um, we're giving, uh, raffling off or doing it in a pool, autographed jerseys. So check them all out. Uh, it's going to be a great time. If you like that video, we got a lot more. So check out any of these that are right over here. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Your ideas are intriguing to me, and I wish to subscribe to your newsletter.